Hello, everybody. My guest today is John Corgan. Today, he's in his 30s and has found maturity with a purpose as both founder and CEO of a company called Summit Sync. He's led the company to be one of the, most, the fastest growing enterprise SaaS companies in the US today. The company provides sales enablement and marketing intelligence to drive more meetings for its thousands of clients at the conferences and trade shows that they attend. John, are you ready to take us to the top? I am. All right. Listen, I'm a data guy. So when you say fastest growing enterprise SaaS companies in the US today, I have to ask you, back it up. How do you know that? Yeah, so we're we're gaining. We are acquiring about six hundred and fifty to seven hundred and fifty new customers every week. Um, and given the who those customers are and the amount of revenue, uh, that's faster than almost any other SaaS company out there. Okay, so what's your over the past twelve months? What what's your ARR growth rate? Uh, I'm actually not going to tell you that number, but it's uh, above ten million. No, no. Great. Not the number, growth rate. 100% year over year, 1,000% year over year, 10,000% year over year. So okay. I think okay. at the beginning of 2018, we had probably 50 customers. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's, 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 let me take a step back here now for a second. Tell me about the for people not familiar with the company. What's the company do? Yeah. So we can tell you where your clients and prospects are going to be at trade shows and conferences, and we can automate the setup of in person meetings for you. And then we can connect those back to CRM and marketing automation. Okay. So people should think about this like a way to, ju- you know, all the sponsor dollars they're putting out. This is a way to kind of juice those sponsor dollar results at conferences. Absolutely. It's a way to get more revenue driven meetings at conferences and trade shows without doing a lot of work. Got and it. it's an extension of your marketing cloud. Yep. Okay. So give me a general sense. Here. I don't want to go down every customer cohort, but on average, what's a customer paying you for this software? Uh, north of $10,000 a year. Okay. Okay. North. And, and why would someone pay... 100,000 versus 10,000. In other words, what are your pricing axes? Just size of just the amount of events they're going to and the size of the team that they're sending. Okay, so it's team size, number of events, not number of leads though. No, not number of leads. Isn't so, that isn't that the key value metric? Why is the number of team members they send more important than the number of leads they're capturing at the event? For us it's about how many accounts they have. So it's about seats and number of events versus number of leads. Number of leads, we're not interested in charging you per meeting we're going to drive, that just didn't feel right to us. Well, I guess my question is, what if someone has 100 seats, but no leads coming in versus 100, 100 leads with one seat? Wouldn't the, for, wouldn't the latter be getting more value from your platform, but be paying yeah, way their less? Or, their organization would just be failing at that point. So it wouldn't, they wouldn't be buying our software. Uh, if you had, it's, it's not about, it's about mapping your current uh, CRM to where they're going and then us adding to that. Yeah, it's not about us. If you have zero people in your uh, customer base, we can't help you. Got it. Okay, very good. Put this on a timeline for us. When did you launch the company? Uh, late 2015. And where were you at that point kind of in life? You just left corporate. You just sold your last company. Where was your head at? I had just sold. I was a corporate um, development guy. I just sold that company. Which company? Uh, it was called Telemetry. Okay. So we sold it to a... Asian Asian conglomerate. Um, so I did that transaction, and then we started Summit Sync. The guy who was the head of sales at Telemetry uh, became my co-founder, and we started Summit Sync together. We started out as a, a mobile consumer-based app, uh, kind of Tinder meets business conferences. Did that for about you know a year and a half, almost two years. Uh, that did. We had a lot of users, but it just there was no revenue, and there was no path to revenue. So we went out and we listened to a lot of companies and we iterated from there. Interesting. So that would have taken you up through like 2017 and it sounds like there was a pivot that happened. Yep. Interesting. Um, what do you have to say in terms of total customers? Today, just about 9,000. Okay. And velocity wise, you said you're adding, you said 650 per month. Yeah. And where, I mean, this is obviously a channel that's, you know, you're, you're killing it here. If you're adding that many on 9,000, where are you getting these customers? What's the growth channel? So most of it is our direct sales force. So we're out calling folks, uh, doing that ourselves. We do. We just launched a reseller channel, so we have five uh, resellers going out there who have a significant number of salespeople uh, each who are driving a lot of uh, leads and demos for us that are converting nicely. What's your team size today, full time? Full time, thirty five. And how many of those are focused on kind of the sales machine? Uh, eighteen. Oh, oh, okay. Fairly significant. And this is an inside, like what's the playbook they're following? An inside sales playbook, an account-based marketing playbook? Account-based marketing playbook. Okay. So they're going, they're targeting accounts, they're reaching out, they're going that way. Yeah. We've been, we haven't broken into BDRs, SDRs, 
um, account managers. Okay. And how many, how many BDRs per SDR and per A? Uh, God, I got to think about that. So there are six, it's about six, six, it's about one to one right now. Okay. So every SDR on your company is responsible for filling up the calendars of one bu- kind of, kind of a uh, yeah. business development uh, rep. And then what happens after the sale, the, the account executives come in after the sale closes or they're closing the sale. They're closing the sale, handing okay. it off to, uh, account management and, uh, account management is actually being supported a little bit by a couple product folks right now who we're going to have to hire some more account managers to get them back to doing product. Okay. And have you done all this bootstrapped or have you raised? No, we've raised, uh, we raised about 5 million bucks. Okay. Why, why raise? Why couldn't you, it sounds like you're growing really fast. Uh, you said fastest, you know, in the, in the country, why raise capital? Yeah. So no. So we originally, we originally had raised, uh, and then also like we just needed to raise because we went through a lot of product iterations. We went through a lot of people, um, and engine, the engineers that we have are not cheap. Uh, so we couldn't have bootstrapped it in that regard. We had to, we had to create a sophisticated enough product to sell, uh, and that cost money and that was money we didn't have. So we went out and raised. When was the last round? Uh, last round was last July. Last July. Okay. So you're fundraising right now or you're in M and A talks. Which one is it? Yeah, we're fundraising. Okay. How much do you want to raise and, and why, how'd you get to that number? So probably we'll end up looking at around 20 million bucks. Okay. Um, and that's just to expand sales and marketing and, a, and a couple of key, uh, adding and building kind of middle management and a middle layer to product and engineering. And if you raise this capital on terms that obviously you enjoy, what are you telling the potential investors in terms of what this 20 million will you like to drive to in terms of ARR targets? Um, I kind of don't want to tell you that, um, but it's a significant number. So it's going way north of where we are. Well, but that's I obvious, John. My, my question though is people sometimes will raise uh, and the ratio between how much they raise and AR they add is sometimes one to one. Sometimes it's 50%, sometimes it's 10%. I'm trying to get a sense of kind of how aggressive you're being with the capital. Yeah, I think it'll probably be 50%. Okay, so, so with 20 million raised, do you think you can be efficient enough to drive 10 million bucks in new ARR? Yeah, at least. Uh, interesting. Okay, um, and then uh, and then um, take me into some of the other economics related to any SaaS company. So churn is critical. What's your churn and how do you manage it? Yeah, so right now our churn uh, is around 6%. Uh, and how we manage that that's, is- Hold on, that's do- logo churn per month? That is, yeah, logo churn per month. So we typically, it comes down to why our customers churning is that they are not going to, they're, they've had some type of economic event or rebudgeting of, of conference and trade show budget, and they are not going to as many events. So they're basically just w- either winding down or not consuming as much from us. We don't necessarily lose them, but our annual contract value uh, goes down and we continue to, to have them as a customer, but they're just not paying us as much. Okay. So that 6% is not logo churn. It's, it's revenue churn per month. You still yeah. have the logo. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 6% revenue churn. And are you driving any meaningful? So the cohort that signed up a year ago with you, 6% of their revenue churns every month. Are you driving any expansion revenue in that same cohort or no? Yeah. And the, in the, in the people that have were our customers last year in terms of ACV growth. Yes. Significantly. Okay, so when you net it all out, net revenue retention year over year from that cohort a year ago, they're obviously churning 6% every month. What are you adding back on top of that? Uh, I actually don't know. Are you above uh, 100%? Does your does your expansion more than make up churned revenue? Yeah, oh yeah. Massively. On that same cohort? Yeah. Okay, so not yeah. including new customer ads? Correct. Okay, that's great, good. So net revenue retention above 100%, um, that's obviously a healthy, healthy place to be. Um, Walk, so I'm going to, I want to back into the numbers here. You, you mentioned um, price point. Did you always have a $10,000 kind of a year price point or did you kind of go down no. to that or up to that? Yeah, no, we, we futzed around with probably 15 different, different pricing iterations. So right now it's a uh, annual licensing fee plus a uh, consumption based model on how many trade shows you're going, trade shows and events you're going to and how many users you're sending. So um, usually a, an entry point is about $5,000 and then the consumption base gets you the other $5,000 based on utilization and usage for larger companies like an IBM. Uh, it's a different deal. We, you know, waive a, a annual subscription fee because they're going to consume so much of the product. 
So the 10,000 number per year you gave me earlier, that's not an average across 9,000. That's like what people might grow to after a year. They start off at 5,000 a year. No, that's about your first year entry point is about 10,000. So it's about a thousand, just under a thousand bucks a month. Your second year, uh, depending on the number of conferences and events you're going to, if you're expanding your sales team and marketing team, the number of people going to that grows fairly significantly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's for new customer ads today. What I'm trying to get a sense of, you mentioned you had a lot of different pricing tests. You have 9,000 customers today as a result of those tests. If you look at the 9,000 you already have today, not new customer ads, what you have today, I assume they're paying something less than $10,000 per year because you had cheaper price points in the past. I'm trying to figure out like how cheap, how much have you kind of changed and tested? Yeah. So, I mean, God, at one point we were 1500 bucks a month. One point it was, Hey, give us, you know, $25,000. Uh, so now we've, we've, we've gone actually down in terms of price over time because it was easier for us to get customers that way, drive throughput, uh, and, and continue and look at expansion revenue in year two. Okay. So John, then the, the cheapest customers and the ones paying you the least, the, the minimum is 10 grand, 10 grand a year. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, I can, I can obviously do that math, right? 9,000 customers paying 10 grand a year divide 10 grand by 12. So it's about 800 bucks a month. That would put you at $7.5 million per month in revenue. Is that accurate? Somewhere around there. Okay. That doesn't feel right to me with a team size of 35 and $5 million raised. Yeah. Uh, That's about where we are. We actually, in terms of $5 million raised, we also have a bank line behind that. So we do have a pretty large financial facility. In terms of equity raise, we've raised 5 million bucks. Okay, but just to be clear, what you're telling me is you're doing $7.5 million per month right now, which means you're doing about $90 million in terms of annual run rate with a team of 35. Yeah. That's accurate. I wouldn't release that publicly, but yeah, it's, we're getting there. Okay, well, I'm multiplying. This is why I asked a lot of questions about price point and customer account. You said a minimum was 10 grand a year and 9,000 customers. That yeah. would put you at 90 million bucks in terms of run rate today. I'm so getting... Well, 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 what we'll do today, or this year, 2019. Okay, and what did you do over the last 12 months? Hmm. Probably a third of that. Okay, so you did, you're closing out the books right now because we're recording this in January of 2019. You're saying last year you closed out about a $30 million run rate. Yeah. Okay. Um, you're based, uh, the team of 35, where's everyone based? New York and DC. Okay, New York and DC. No, no, no big remote teams. No, we had a remote team. We got rid of them. Okay. Um, why have you held back on hiring at all, or 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 you just thirty five is good? You don't need to hire much more. No, we've held back on hiring. We've had a lot of, we've churned a lot of folks, uh, and we've just not figured out um, the best way to hire. Yeah, so that's something we're very much working on. So John, something doesn't feel right to me here. I'll tell you why. If you did 30 million bucks last year and you feel like you're gonna do 90 million this year, people will not be churning that company. You've only raised $5 million, which means there's very little dilution. It means that the, the employee equity pool is very valuable. Something doesn't seem right to me here. Yeah, so I would say in terms of overall support, like Loeb Enterprises, who uh, we're, we're partnered with, has helped us in terms of staffing. So we have 35 people on our payroll. Love Enterprises has 400 other people that are there. We use 50 of them uh, to help us as well. So the team's about, if you think about uh, employees plus the Love Enterprises folks, we've got about 85 people working on the business. No, I totally get that. But you just said you've had issues keeping people. There's been churn. I would never leave a company that has gone from 2015 to today, a $30 million run rate with plans to triple year over year. So, something doesn't feel right to me. Either the revenue's lower or, I mean, something's not right here. Yeah, I would say when we went from, so why we turned a lot of fo- uh, folks is, uh, and why we haven't been successful in that regard of, uh, and when I'm talking churning folks, I'm talking like, hey, we churned 10 people last year. That's a lot we though. Don't... A company that's growing, if, you're, if, you are, if, you are, if these numbers are accurate and, and what you're telling me is accurate, no one would be leaving the company. It's a hyper yeah, growth company. We had a lot of consumer focused marketers uh, and consumer focused folks that were really good people, but weren't enterprise folks. So that's why uh, I think we we mishired uh, talent skill sets. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Okay, L- let me ask you a different question. Uh, in <coughs> the 20 million bucks you're going to go out and raise, I assume you've already kicked off some of these conversations. What in your, in your not what you're actually gonna get because I'm sure you're in negotiations, but in an ideal world, if you raise 20 million bucks, what valuation would you love to raise that at? Uh, I haven't, you know what? We're going through that process and I don't have a great answer for you today there. Well, what, I'm ac- what I'm actually asking for is your thought process on getting to whatever the number is. I care less about what the number is and more about your thought process. Yeah, I think the thought process is, Hey, why are we raising 20 million bucks? Like, what's the point? Like, what is this money for? Uh, what, what does this get you to in terms of milestone? Is it, um, why, what are you doing with that money and what justifies what's the next milestone you're taking that to? I would say is why we're out raising that money. Sorry, not your thought process around why you're raising your thought process around how you get to evaluation. Uh, thought process in terms of how I get to evaluation. So obviously some form, some discounted against uh, revenue and, and potential profit throughput in terms of how many customers we're adding, all of those things is kind of where how I get to it. I don't look at it in the most sophisticated way. Um, and I also do rely kind of heavily on, um, you know, our advisors and our board to think about that. Um, right now, I'm very much focused on, hey, how do we run the business? How do we scale? Um in terms of raising and all of those things, I haven't put a ton of thought into uh, valuation numbers just yet. Are you reinvesting kind of aggressively in growth, meaning you're operating at about break even right now, investing kind of everything that goes to the bottom line back into growth? Yeah. Okay. So if you're operating, my, my expectation there was that that question was that you were going to say you're extremely profitable with a team of only 35 people. If you're doing a $30 million run rate, that's almost a mi- north of a million bucks in AR per employee, which is 10 times the average across the data that I've captured. So where's all that money going? If you're making 30 yeah, million so bucks a year, where's that money effort. going? Yeah. So in terms of dollars, what goes into it? One, a ton of money goes into data and processing. A ton of money goes back to the 50 other employees or 50 other contractors that we What's the uh, kickback not, you pay them? What's up? You pay them a kickback, like an affiliate fee? So the, um, yeah. So in terms of, we do pay an affiliate fee. Um, a lot of data and processing, obviously. The, how, sorry, how much app, is the affiliate fee? Like 30%, 50%? It's right around 40. Okay, 40% yeah. in perpetuity or just first year ACV? No, it's for the first three years. First three years, okay. Okay, and then what do you mean data and processing? So to do our prediction modeling of, where someone is physically going to be, we have to acquire lots and lots of data all the time. So we're going out and buying lists from folks and we're working with conferences and trade shows to get that data and that information. So that's not free to acquire and that's not free to process. Okay, but over the past 12 months, what do you think you spent on that, 100 grand? No, God, no, way more than that. Okay. Uh, in the millions. Okay. So, yeah. What kinds of lists are these where you're paying millions of, I mean, that seems ex- extravagant. It's not millions per list, but... You're, you're basically, hey, you're acquiring the, the list information at uh, specific trade shows and conferences across 25000 to 30000 of these things. So one list might be $2,000. Um, so you're basically, we're building a pool of where people are physically going to be, right? Do I know you're going to CES? Do I know you're going to Canline? Do I know you're on the uh, National Advertising Show? So we have to build, uh, you know, the consistency of who went last year and who goes this year is very much where we're spending a lot of money to prove that out. And you have to buy that data and that data needs to be accurate. So that's where we're spending a ton of money uh, on R and D and product development, uh, acquiring that data to make sure that it's accurate. Okay. Very good. Look, so just to be clear, you said, uh, you said here 2018, you're wrapped up at about a $30 million run rate, which would mean you're doing about 2.5 million bucks a month right now with hopes to grow that three X over the next 12 months. Am I understanding yeah. you correctly? Hopefully. Yeah, that's the plan. I, I think, no, no, sorry. Gonna... Am I understanding you correctly in terms of where you're at today and what you want to do? Yes. Okay. It was about 27 million, by the way. It okay. wasn't 30. Okay, good. So it was still about 2.4 million bucks a month, but across 9,000 customers. And that would mean each customer pays on average about 300 bucks a month, not a thousand bucks a month, right? Yeah. The cohort now, so last year's cohort, uh, they basically on the trial basis. So we're paying about that. And then this year that'll be, we'll push it up to about a thousand bucks a month. That's the new pricing for new customers. Going yeah, yeah, no, no. I know your new pricing is 10, 10 grand a year minimum. I'm talking about your historical cohort of 9,000 paying customers today. 9,000 customers times 278 bucks a month gets you 2.4 million bucks a month right now in revenue or 27 million bucks in ARR in terms of run rate. Yeah. That's accurate? 
Right around there, yes. All right. Very good, John. Let's wrap up with the famous five. Number one, what's your favorite business book? Uh, Phil Knight's Shoe Dog is great. Number two, is there a CEO you're following or studying right now? Uh, John Chambers. Number three, what's your favorite online tool for building the company? Airtable. And number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? Uh, about two. Come on, John. Two hours of sleep is no one's going to respect that. That's like you're killing yourself. No, no, no. I get, I get about six. Uh, last night I got two. It was a long night. So sorry, I'm a little dusty this morning. That's okay. All right. Six hours. And uh, what's your situation? Married, single, kids? Single. Okay. No kiddos? No kiddos. You know, some people are single, but they have kids running around. They don't even know about them. You know, you always got to ask. So listen, my co-founder had a baby in July and uh, he's made, uh, I always said that parenthood, you know, the first kind of six months were really brutal and he's made it look like just the easiest thing ever. That's funny. All right. And how old are you? I'm 36. 36. All right. Last question. What do you wish your 20 year old self knew? Oh God. Cool. Uh, calm down. <laughs> Guys, calm down. There you have it. Summit Sync launched first kind of as a consumer model up through 2017, kind of burned cash, figuring that out, realized that wasn't the play, then shifted to more enterprise plans. Now 9,000 customers paying 200, 300 bucks a month doing about 2.4 million bucks a month in revenue closed out at a run rate of about 27 million bucks in terms of ARR uh, in 2018, hoping to 3X that year over year um, in 2019 and also potentially raise a $20 million fund. They're operating at outbreak even right now, 35 people between New York City and DC, 6% revenue churn per month, but net revenue retention each year above 100% because of expansion. John, thanks for taking us to the top. Hey, thank you very much.